Hey, this is Zach Bagans from Ghost Adventures, and you are listening to the ghost host, Sophia Temporilli, on LiveParanormal.com. Today, we welcome feature film actor, stuntman, and Hollywood Ghost Hunters co-founding lead paranormal investigator, Rick McCallum. Rick co-founded Hollywood Ghost Hunters with fellow legendary horror icons, such as Kane Hodder. He has worked with so many amazing people in the field and in the field of horror. Everyone make sure to visit HollywoodGhostHunters.com, HGHMag.com, Twitter at rick 4 stunts Facebook search Hollywood Ghost Hunters, Rick McCallum. Every- Let's welcome him into the show today. All right. All right, Sophia. Rick, are you there? Thanks for coming on. I am. Hey, Rick. Thank you for coming on today. Oh, my pleasure. So, to start off, a few years ago at Shriekfest, I interviewed legendary actor Michael Berryman, and I know there is a lot of things, you know, in movies, uh, such as your work in Devil's Rejects, that um, directors do to kind of get a response. Is there anything on the Devil's Rejects set or any other movie that you've worked on that has been kind of a scary or interesting way to elicit a response? Well, I would say the best best thing that I have seen is with Kane. You know, he plays uh, Jason, you know, in Friday the 13th. He also plays Victor Crowley in the Hatchet series. Um, he mm-hmm. actually will do something where he won't meet the actresses or actors before they're seen. So that when he comes out, oh, wow. uh, he comes out like a freaking freight train. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kane has a habit of, <laughs> I mean, just... just screaming to get ready, like, Rah! and then he comes out. I mean, the people are just terrified when he walks out. So I've, oh. I've seen him do that for years. And I mean, I don't think you could get a better answer than that one. Yeah, for sure. I've heard of lots of movie sets doing that. I believe um, actually on Scream, they didn't let um, the voice actor for the Scream voice talk to any of the people on set just so they couldn't associate a face with the actual person. Yeah, it's it's strange when you actually meet the the uh, face. When I did a thing in Scarefest last year, Kane and mm-hmm. R.A. and I had uh, uh, a, little, a couple of uh, cocktails. I don't drink, but they were around uh, with the man who does the voice of the Crypt Keeper. keeper. So it was really weird listening to that while you're sitting there <laughs> you know, having a, a you know, nice tea. It's... Yeah, definitely that would be very strange to have happen. And speaking of Kane, um, I believe I read online that you actually worked together on Friday the 13th, the video game. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. Uh, Friday the 13th video game was a whole lot of fun, and it actually took us a long time to do it because what happened? I was the stunt coordinator on it, and uh, Kane was obviously Mm -hmm. also, you know, um, he and I were like co-coordinators, and he played Jason, obviously. But what had happened is they released the game first on the video, not into physical, and it became mm-hmm. such a hit that they called us up and they said, uh, we need to get back together and add more more kills. People keep coming on and want more stuff. So we would go back and we'd make even more kills, and then they'd call back up a couple more and say, hey, we need more, let's go. So it, was, it took a quite a while until we were finally done with everything. I mean, we just kept adding stuff and adding stuff and adding stuff. So whoever's buying the game is definitely getting their money's worth, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that would actually be me. I'm literally not just saying this. Uh, that is one of my favorite video games. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's actually a lot of fun because, uh, you know, when you get to come up with something that they actually use in the game, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Most of everything in there is from Tom Savini, who was the, you know, the uh, guy who did most of the uh, thinking mm-hmm. up of the kills for the franchise. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to play. Um, I don't think my friends like playing with me so much because I'm always like, oh, I'm going to go look for more stuff, and I will just leave out the window, and when when Jason <laughs> comes, I'm just kind of gone by then, honestly. I just <laughs> take off. Yeah, it, it, it was a lot of fun, though. I mean, uh, some of the kills in there are just really, really cool. Yeah, I, I've experienced a couple of those. <laughs> They're very interesting, and... Um, very cool to see um but i know with all your work as a hollywood stuntman and an actor what has been the most powerful role for you to develop emotionally and possibly physically well emotionally because i don't do that much acting and when i do act they hardly ever give me any words to say 
there was mm-hmm. one thing that I did, a TV movie on Lifetime uh, called Stolen Su- from the Suburbs. And I played a guy named Ivan who was actually the best way of saying the enforcer for this sex slave trade ring where I was punching little girls and grabbing people and flinging them into trucks and stuff. And I actually Mm -hmm. went up to the director and I told him, I said, listen, man, you have to kill this guy before the end of this show. (laughs) So even I didn't like my character. (laughs) I actually got a, a message from one of the people from Hatchet. And they just said, hey, I just saw you on this TV show. I hated your character. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I watched this one show on TV, and, you know, I think that really says something about the actor, because you don't like the character so much, you want them gone, but it's like the actor is so good at what they do, they're actually able to make you dislike a character that much. Well, I got a lot of people on Facebook sending me stuff saying, you are such a jerk. How could you do that? And I'm like, guys, it's, it's a movie. It's supposed to show you what's out there so you don't have that happen to you. You get it? You know? uh, yeah, I've seen that um, definitely online with this particular show. Um, there are a lot of people that, you know, think that something that happens on the show somehow is actually in real life with the person themselves who plays the character. So it's very interesting to see that. But uh, I definitely think it says something about someone's acting skills who is able to make you feel that certain way because that's what a show wants and a movie wants is for someone to actually get an emotional response like that. Oh, I think so. But I I can tell you a very funny story about playing a character. In the uh, movie Mm -hmm. Hatchet 2, I played uh, one of the hunters and his name was Silent John because he never says anything. Um, gets killed magnificently at the end, but he never says anything. And the uh, production company, Adam Green, who was the director and producer, had uh, everybody show up at this one place, Dark Delicacies in Burbank, to sign posters for fans. So we're all sitting there, and they're coming one, you know, to each person coming down the road. And they get down to me, and these two guys say, would you sign our poster? And I said, sure, I'd be happy to. And the guy looks at me, and he goes, you can't talk. I said, well, yeah, I can he goes, no, it says on the forum boards that you're hired because you're mute. I said, well, that's not right, is it? And he goes, no, you can't talk. And I said, dude, I'm talking to you. What are you missing here? <laughs> I mean, the guy was arguing with me that I can't talk. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> that's uh, definitely a very interesting conversation to have with someone um, about not being able to talk. <laughs> yeah, when I'm talking to him, uh, wow. I'm looking at him saying, dude, I am talking to you. You get it? <laughs> I'm not acting like I'm talking to you. I am talking to you. <laughs> oh, Sophia, that was brilliant. I should have used that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I know that you do a lot of work in the horror um, industry, but what led you to actually start into the paranormal field, and what was your earliest paranormal experience? Oh, my earliest paranormal experience really got me started. It was when I was 13, which was not last week. Uh, when my grandfather died, he wanted to be buried in Paducah, Kentucky. So my mother, I lived in Chicago at the time. Mm -hmm. My mother and I, you know, jumped on a train with him and we took him down to the funeral home. And when we got there, we tried to find a hotel. It was right next to the cemetery because, you know, we weren't going to be there, but except for the funeral. And, uh, we go to the one place that's there and the guy says, I'm sorry, we only have one room. And this sounds like the start of a horror movie, but it's true. He says, we only have one room and I have to tell you it's haunted. Now, I'm 13 years old. I mean, this is like winning the golden ticket to Disneyland, you know? Yes, haunted. Yes, we'll take it. So we go up there, and the room is like almost a square, and it looks kind of like a volleyball court with, you know, the wood that you would see on a basketball or volleyball court. Mm -hmm. And my mother's bed is against one wall, and mine is against the wall on the other side. So in the middle of the night, I heard her scream, and I woke up, and I look, and I see her bed sliding across the floor towards me, and it's going pretty Oh, wow. And then I realized that my bed is going across the floor towards hers. And we actually smacked together in the middle of the room. And she's, you know, my mother was pretty cool. So, I mean, she wasn't really freaking out, but she's like, what is going on? So we oh. tried to figure out, even back then before the ghost shows, and this is actually 50 years ago. i got to hate to say how old I am. But um, we actually took glasses because, you know, the nice round thing and set them against the side of the wall and pushed them to see how far they would roll. And they would barely go. It was hard, you know, the floor was not warped is what we were trying to Mm -hmm. figure out. And then we took the things and we pushed them. 
and if I shoved it as hard as I could, it'd go about three feet. And it had to be at least 15 feet each one from each side went, you know, until I hit. So we couldn't figure it out. You know, for, we were trying to think if a truck went by and, you mm-hmm. know, made it roll because they were on rollers so you could move them around the room. But um, nothing, there was nothing there that we could see. We tried shoving them. You couldn't shove them very far, certainly not far enough to get it to the middle of the room, you know. So that was my first paranormal thing. And ever since then, I've been really interested in it. Well, that's definitely a very amazing first experience to have. Um, I know there's tons of people in the field who search for something like that their entire existence in the field. And that's very amazing that that happened to you like on your first time. I mean, that's definitely terrifying, but very cool to have happen. Well, I wasn't really scared. You know, it's it's funny. And I tell people this, and I think the mm-hmm. people that are real, really into the paranormal will get it. Because I get quite a bit of stuff when I go ghost hunting. And I... Mm-hmm. I got the typical stuff, a blip here, you know, a voice there. But it was only when I stopped ghost hunting and just going to the locations and being a person saying, hey, how you doing, that more stuff came to me. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a very good way to investigate. I try to investigate um, like that as well, you know, because if I'm dead, I kind of just don't want someone so serious. I like to laugh, so I think that just being yourself and, you know, just just hanging out with the ghost itself instead of just trying to hold kind of more in serious investigative session is better because you will get more of a response if you kind of treat it more as if they're still alive. Well, I I absolutely believe that you can't go to ghosts, that ghosts will come to you. Yeah. So, I mean, the the nicer you are. I I was on another show, uh, Coast to Coast AM. I don't know if you know that one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, I played a clip, and, and then I was saying, could you come closer? Thank you. Could you come closer? Thank you. And somebody called and said, you're the most polite ghost hunter we've ever heard. And they, they said, why is that? And I said, well, let me tell you two quick stories. And I said, first off, Kane and I were a ghost hunting, and we had a uh, a guest with us. And we went into one room, and the guy started getting real belligerent and, you know, provoking. And Kane just turned around and looked at him, and he goes, we don't do that. So that ended that part of the program right there, you know. Um, <laughs> but but I told them, I told the guy on the radio, I said, look, assuming, you know, that spirits are somebody who has passed away, that may mean there were people at one time. I said, if I came over to your house and started calling you names and yelling at you, would you want me to stay? And they said, well, no. And I said, then why would they? It's so true, you know, um, just because they are people who have passed on. So it's, you have to treat them how you would want to treat someone who is actually alive, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Ex- exactly the way I feel. And I know you were talking about investigating with Kane, and I know you are in a group with Kane. How did you initially um, co-found Hollywood Ghost Hunters? Well, it's, 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 it's a pretty cool story. Uh, I had always wanted to, uh, you know, to have a ghost hunting group. But, you know, back when I was doing it, I started really doing it seriously in about 1975. There were no Mm -hmm. TV shows. There was no equipment. You know, and if you said you were ghost hunting, people rolled their eyes and didn't want to talk to you anymore. But uh, every time I went ghost hunting with somebody, there'd be a noise or something would start to happen, and they'd head the other direction, you know. Didn't want that. I wanted somebody that would, you know, hang in there. And uh, Kane and I and R.A., but R.A. wasn't there this night, were at uh, Mansfield mm-hmm. Prison uh, in Ohio. That's where they shot the Shawshank Redemption. And they used this yeah. place for a reason. It looks like a horror set. I mean, you've got these yeah. super long cell blocks with rusty things and the moonlight coming in, and it's creepy as hell. And uh, Kane and I were done shooting for the night, so we decided, hey, let's go mess around. So we started walking around. We were way in the back of the in the back of the prison. Nobody else was there. And we start walking Mm -hmm. along and he goes, Hey, let's ghost hunt. Now I had never told him that I was into ghost hunting. Nobody knew, you know, because it was pretty much just something I went and did. So I said, okay. So we're walking along and we'd gone, I'd gone up on the second floor and the third floor of the tiers. And I came back down and we start walking and I look up ahead of me and I see a shadow man going across, you know, probably 60 or 70 yards ahead of us. And you could see it. Oh, wow. And I looked, and I turned around to say something to Kane, and he was gone. 
And I thought to myself, great, even the big scary Jason dude runs away, right? And then I hear behind me yeah. running, and I turn back to look back where the thing was. There's Kane running straight at it, right? I was like, oh, that's the guy. <laughs> there he is. Let's start a group right Jeez. now. So we did. And, and, and our race says, you know, we always needed somebody pretty, so we got him. But, uh, you know, our race <laughs> wrong a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely an amazing starting point for your career as a team in the paranormal. And I know together you were on Ghost, you were on Ghost Adventures. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that episode and what happened behind the scenes while filming? Yeah, there's actually a couple interesting things. First off, one thing you have to know about, especially Kane and myself, RA as well, um, we're very uh, protective of our reputations. If you hear anybody mm -hmm. ever say that we fake something, you know, punch them in the eye because it's just not the case, you know. Um, so whenever we're with, with other groups, we always keep a really good eye on them, and we split up. Kane went with Zach, I went with Nick, and uh, R.A. went with Aaron, and we went to different parts of the Pico House here in L.A. And uh, while we were doing that, all of us really kept an eye to make sure nothing funny was going on. And I can say um, – that there was nothing went on untoward on the episode we were on, okay? Because I always hear about mm -hmm. different things. Well, did they do something? Well, nothing happened on this one. I can vouch for that. They were all about bored. But um, we did have some really interesting things happening. Uh, Kane went into one room, and they got some pretty good uh, EVP sessions, like uh, where uh, Aaron says uh, something about Kane killing him, and he goes, hey, I've got an alibi. And then on the EVP it says something good, Right. And then a minute or two later, it comes yeah. back and it says, "It says, uh, don't say anything. They don't know from nothing." You know, on the on the EVP. Wow. So that was pretty cool. Now Nick and I had a real interesting thing. We were walking along, and first off, if you ever see the show, he and I were all walking together. And both of us stop in the exact same place and look at each other, and the hair on our arms was sticking straight up, and nobody mm -hmm. else had felt it. They'd all walk through the same thing. Just he and I had felt it. So we ended up ghost hunting down there. And the, the weird thing that happened down there was, first off, we could hear people walking across the, the thing above us. And the building that we were in was empty. The, the people had cleared it out and locked it up. But we could clearly hear people walking up above us. And then we heard uh, a noise down at one end. And I said, Nick, that sounds like a spirit box. He goes, my spirit box is not on. So we go down there. We get down, walk all the way down the end of the hall, and it's on. So... While we're there, at the very other end of the hall, we hear what sounds really loud, somebody running up steel steps. So we go taking off down there, and we go around the corner, and part of it was blocked off. We couldn't go to our left. We could only go forward or to our right. And we went to the right, and there were steps, but they were concrete, and they wouldn't have made any sound like that. So right then we hear pounding on the other door in the back, so we go back there, and it's actually Zach and a security guard. They were looking for us, so we took off. But... The weird thing is, you know, with the steps, about a year later, somebody invited uh, our group to come down back to the Pico House. So R.A. and I went, and I was telling the story, and the guy goes, really, come here. And he took us over to the thing, and if you went by the side, uh, the left way, where we couldn't go, there was a big staircase mm -hmm. of all steel stairs. So, I mean, that was oh, pretty wow. interesting when I saw that a year later. So, But that, uh -huh. that was all yeah. pretty cool. I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to film with the Ghost Adventures crew, too, and I can definitely say that on the night I filmed with them, there was nothing going on. Everything was definitely legitimate, and there were some amazing responses. So it's very cool to have that experience, um, you know, at the Pico House and the Queen Mary. Oh, the Queen Mary. Right. I was actually on the one where they uh, they had a hunt on the Queen Mary, but not for the show. They had, had a uh, like a convention out there. A couple of me and R.A. went down there. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, Ghost Adventures is, is really cool. Actually, the magazine I have, HGH Mag, which stands for Hollywood Ghost Hunters Magazine, the first person I uh, interviewed was Zach, and the third person I interviewed was Nick. Um, and also, a lot of people don't know this, I stunt coordinated a movie that Zach produced called Sympathy Said the Shark. Oh, wow, Yeah. Uh, actually, it's funny enough, I think I know what uh, event you were talking about. It was um, a while ago, but uh, it was at the Queen Mary, I believe it was the Darkness Radio event? Yeah, actually, I think it was. Yeah, I think I actually met you there. 
Oh, did you? Yeah, Voyage of the Damned. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, Sophia, I've seen your picture on on the t on the uh, internet. I would have remembered if I met you. <laughs> she was a lot littler. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, I looked a lot different back then. Um, so Zach actually brought me up to you guys and introduced me. So um, yeah, it was very cool. But I was I couldn't find actually, any pictures, so I wasn't sure. Actually, you know what? I do remember that now. Now that you say that Zach introduced us, yes, I do remember that. Yeah, I, I looked a little different. <laughs> I changed a lot since then, but yeah. Well, that was probably, um, what, six years ago? Something like um, that? Honestly, maybe like nine years ago. Or yeah, it was, it, was, yeah. It, was, it was a long time. And you would have been, what, uh, two? <laughs> <laughs> I would have been uh, about ten, I believe. Yeah. No, I do I do remember Zach bringing somebody up. So, yeah. Cool, we've met before. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll see each other again soon, and I won't look so dorky because I was, <laughs> that was not a good phase in my life, but I thought it was really cool, which was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny was uh, um, we had dinner up there. I don't, You might have had dinner with us. It was me and uh, Aaron and uh, R.A. and some other people all had dinner up there on the ship. So I don't know if you were, if you were there for that. Oh. I'm not sure about that, but I know it was a great event, and um, it was really cool meeting you guys. It was really funny, too, because my parents um, knew that Zach was introducing me to someone, but they actually had no idea until recently. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah that you, was you know who that is? <laughs> you know you know what's really funny is people that, that don't know us um, – you know, I mean, they know of us. They know more of Kane. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm like the unknown guy, and I've been in over 75 projects. You know, <laughs> but I'm, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm still the unknown guy, which is which is kind of cool. But uh, people don't realize how big we are until they meet us. Like, you know, Kane's you know six four two forty. I'm I'm six four two fifty. Our race six five three hundred and thirty pounds. I mean, right. you know, usually we walk onto the ships. They ask two of us to walk on the other side to counterbalance out RA. You know, <laughs> ballast. Yeah, exactly. I know we have to take a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back with more questions. This is Nick Groff, executive producer of Ghost Adventures, the original documentary in Ghost Adventures, season one through ten, an executive producer of Ghost Stalkers, author of Chasing Spirits, the building of the Ghost Adventures crew, and founder of NickGroffTours.com. You are listening to the ghost host, Sophia Temporelli, on LiveParanormal.com. Tune in. Congratulations, Sophia Temporelli. Sophia Temporelli, the go- go- ghost host. Celebrating six years of broadcasting on LiveParanormal.com. So, Rick, can you tell us a little bit about the other members of Hollywood Ghost Hunters? I know we talked a little bit about Kane and Ari, but can you tell us what your individual roles are and who might else be in the team? Well, uh, we have quite a few different people, but it's been one of the one of the things with our group is we are all in the movie business, so it's very hard for us all to be in one place at any time. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the other people are um, Richard Friedman, who is a director. He did Dark Wolf, Born. He's done quite a few things. Actually, I just finished a movie with him the other day. Uh, Adam Green, who has done the Hatchet franchise. Um, right. Um, uh, Robert Pendergraft, who is a special effects expert for all the Hatchet movies. Um, Ed Ackerman, who was one of the Visigoths in the Capital One commercials, and he was in uh, Hatchet 2 with us. Um, Louis Horowitz, who is actually the location manager. Uh, we have the East Coast uh, location manager, Steve Nappy, um, and that's pretty much our group. Mostly, though, we get uh, you know we'll, we'll get out with uh, a person here, a person there, as as often as we can. Mm-hmm. Uh, but trying to get everybody together is is really really hard. And Danielle Harris. Well, too. you definitely. Oh, and Danielle, yes, little Danielle Harris. <laughs> Sorry, Danielle. Well, you definitely have. <laughs> You definitely have a comprised a great team there. So um, when you guys do get together, I'm sure it's a lot of fun to investigate. And uh, you know, I'm know with your specific investigating style, just kind of you know, 
hanging out with the ghost rather than investigating so seriously, I'm sure you get a ton of great responses too. No, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've had some really good things. Um, I find that the smaller the group, the better, um, Mm-hmm. You know, so, sometimes, I mean, we did have one time the entire group uh, at one place, and it was, uh, you know, we actually did get some stuff, actually, but um, it was hard. I mean, you have so much uh, cross-talk, shall we say, that uh, it's hard to, yeah. when you listen to the EVPs, not to know if it's not somebody from a large group. Mm-hmm. So, right. So. Definitely. But that, that's our other people, most- and they, they're all they're all very nice people. And, uh, you know, all very talented in their own right in everything they do. And what has been your most memorable experience investigating with them? What, like, what has been your most, um, you know, kind of cool or exciting piece of evidence? Um, actually, the most, the most awesome thing that I, I've ever seen was when I was with a different group, actually, um, I had uh, gone to, uh, every year I go to Scotland and England for a month to ghost hunt the old castles mm-hmm. and things. And I'd been invited along with a group called Anubis and Premier Paranormal from Scotland. And we went to a place called Bolton Abbey in uh, Yorkshire, England. And while I was there, uh, these people went into the abbey, which the roof is gone and the floor is actually all now grass. It's a very beautiful place. And they had said that... Uh, up on the altar, there had been uh, satanic worship and, and uh, witchcraft and everything else, so they'd put a fence around it. Oh, wow. So me and two of, two other guys who were both bouncers from Liverpool were uh, walking around the grounds, and we went and we saw them over there, and we watched what they were doing, and we we just turned around and started walking around the building, and we heard all this noise, and we come right back around. It couldn't have been five seconds tops, and there's two people standing up, uh, three people on their knees and one person flat on his back, totally knocked out. So I'm standing there going, what the hell happened? So I noticed that they're trying to help him. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I do a lot of safety stuff, you know, for the movies. So I told uh, Peter, this one bouncer, you know, to go get Brian and bring him, you know, bring him over here so that I could make sure I was helping him. So they grab him and they bring him and they toss him over the fence to me and Chunk, the other bouncer guy. We catch him. And it took, you know, a good 20, at least 20 minutes to get him back into sorts. And everybody stayed together because they were all worried about Brian. So nobody was off, mm-hmm. you know, making up stories or anything else. And, and the people that were there, I would trust them anyway, you know. So I, But I wanted to get the real story, you know. So I pulled them aside one by one and asked them what had happened. And the one girl that I know fairly well, Carol Ann, she uh, told me that uh, the one guy that was leading, kind of leading the uh, hunt was a guy named Gary, had them stand up in a line, and he was telling her to kneel. And she says, I'm not going to kneel. And he was saying, don't defy me, because he's trying to, you know, gin up, you know, some spirits. And she, she being a soldier, said, don't talk to me like that or I'll rugby tackle you off the altar. <laughs> right? And she said right then, this is what brought us back as we heard her yell, no or stop. I can't remember which one it was. So she said that what happened was when she said, you know, I'll rugby tackle you off the altar, she saw a face of a goat, a goat's head with no eyes, come through his face right towards her. Oh, wow. And, and she pulled away and she yelled, stop. Well, the next person in line was a psychic who runs Anubis Paranormal named Mandy. And I asked Mandy, Mm -hmm. I said, Mandy, what happened? She goes, well, I saw her yank her head away and yell, stop. She says, and then I saw a goat's head with no eyes coming right towards me. So I hit the deck. She says, I was already going down to my knees because Gary was trying to get us all to do that. Her husband, I didn't get a chance to talk to him. He was the next one in line. And then there was another Gary, and he was on his side. And he said uh, he said something a little different, which to me gave a little more value. He said he saw a ram's head with no eyes, which is close enough. And, uh-huh. you know, but it's not it's not like they were all saying goat's head, goat's head, goat's head, you know, to get their story mm-hmm. straight. I mean, he said something different, so that made me think even more it was real. And then Brian, I, when I finally got him awake, I said, "What happened?" He goes, "I have no idea." <laughs> so, so I mean, that was that was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my life. You know, and they're all talking about goat's heads with no eyes. And I know with investigations like that, you know, 
you never know what you're encountering. Um, is there anything you do before, during, or after an investigation as a means of protection? Uh, I do not, and I, I suggest that most mm -hmm. people do because uh, I am absolutely positive that I have protection around me most of the time. I mean, I've had things happen right. to me that just tell me that something is watching out for me, so I figured I'm okay in that, that regard. But I do tell people all the time, you know, when we go on, tell them they can't come with you. I actually did this on a TV show I did, you know, because the girl mm -hmm. made the mistake of saying the, the K2 meter was going off to her, what she was asking, and she goes, oh, I love you. Do you want to come home with me? And I went, hold it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right? And I said, if you invite them home, they'll come with you. Right? So I said to the mm -hmm. meter, and this is on TV, I said, uh, you're staying here. She's going home. You understand that. And went off five lights. I said, okay, we're good. So um, I just tell people, just tell them they can't come, you know, you know, leave you alone, and they have to stay there. So, I mean, some people do religious things, uh, you know, which is fine. They want to do that. I uh, don't think it can, uh, it can uh, hurt anything for sure. So, um, But me personally, no, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, I've got my guys and they're watching my back. And do you ever investigate home or residential hauntings, or is it mainly just, you know, locations such as the Pico House and places like that? Oh, no, mostly a lot of the places that we've been are like the really big, big places. But I personally, mm -hmm. me and Robert Pentagraft or me and Lewis, uh, Kane has come a few times. RA right now is on the other side of the country, um, so it's it's hard to get him or get around with us. But um, I just had one the other day that was was kind of weird. This this real nice lady Donna called me up and she said, mm -hmm. you know, she had weird things were happening and she thought something was attached to her. So myself and Lewis went over and uh, went through her whole house and I was like saying, well. I'm not picking up anything, no feelings, nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, well, she says, I don't think the house is haunted. I think something's attached to me, right? And she was a really sweet black lady, you know, real nice, kind of mm -hmm. old school. And I said, well, let me, let me look at you with the infrared, and I did that, nothing. And I said, let me try it with the thermal imager. And I put the thermal imager on her, and, I mean, I was kind of startled. She had a black spot, on the right side of her stomach, roughly about oh, wow. twice the size of your fist. So mm -hmm. I thought it might be a camera anomaly, so I'm moving the camera around. Every time I put it back, it's the same spot on her. So I asked her to turn around. It wasn't anywhere but that spot. So I asked her to walk up and down the stairs, and it stayed in the same spot. So she had a very, very cold spot there. Everything else was the orange and, the, you know, the, the lighter colors, you know, that you would normally see, the yellow so mm -hmm. I told her, I said, well, first off, what you've got to do, Donna, is go to a doctor. I said, you may have some kind of blockage right there, right? I said, you know, go see a doctor yeah. for sure. And she Thank says, uh, well, what else can I do? And I said, well, tell it to leave you alone and, tell, you know, tell it to get lost. Tell it has no dominion over you and to, to, to take a hike and be, you know, sincere about it. And she goes, well, can I use my faith? I said, if that's what you want to do, go. And it was so cool. She went like all Baptist revival preacher on it. <laughs> I mean, she was going to town. And as soon as she was done, I waited about two two minutes and put the thermal up, the, up again and looked at her, and it was almost completely gone. Oh, wow. And, and I've never seen anything like that. I've never even heard of anything like that. I actually have the pictures of it, you know, so it's it's actually it's actually pretty cool. And for audience members who may be dealing with some home haunting issues, what advice would you give them? Uh, take control of your own space. You know, it's your space. You know, if you don't want them there, tell them to leave. If they don't leave, you know, tell them you'll call a higher power and get rid of them. You know, and that, that seems to work. You know, but the one thing that a lot of people won't do is they get scared, and you kind of got to walk them through mm -hmm. it. Um, that... Uh, you know, they have to be more powerful than what's there. And you can't say, can you please go away? You know, I'd really like it. You say, get out. You know, so you've got to be firm with it because mm -hmm. if it's something you don't want, you know, pretend it's an ex-boyfriend who you caught cheating, you know, <laughs> get him out of there. You know? Yeah, so, for sure. And it seems to work, actually. Uh, I, I just had a girl on a movie that I was doing who had just moved in this house, and she was terrified. 
and she said that her sliding mm-hmm. doors would would slide open and close at night. Her uh, covers would come up. Her uh, pit bull would go, you know, just start growling, and the covers would come up. So she was really worried, and she heard, uh, like, sounds in the other room. So I went in there, and I didn't really see anything, but that one thing I learned a long time ago is that I never discount anybody's version of what they've seen because I have seen things, and people didn't think that's what I saw. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I see things differently than you do, right? So I never discount anybody's version of what happened. Uh, I wasn't finding anything, but I finally told her, I said, you know, let's, you know, tell it to get lost. So she did several times. Right. And she was finally getting more forceful. And two days later, she goes, Rick, thank you so much. She goes, it's the first time since I've lived here that I've slept through the night. I don't feel, you know, any kind of things. The dog's nice and chilled out. She says nothing happens in the in the bedrooms anymore. And I said, well, see, just take control of your own your own space. It's yours. And I know you've investigated so many awesome locations, but where do you think is the most haunted location in the world, and where would you like to investigate the most? The most haunted one in the world? That would be, I mean, probably someplace I haven't been yet, like Lep Castle in Ireland, mm-hmm. which I'm trying to get into. Um, you know, uh, I've been to some that, are, that were pretty haunted. The Omen House, um, right next yeah. to where the Manson family, you know, did in uh, Sharon Tate and all that. We've gotten some really interesting things there, uh, you know, which yeah. makes me think uh, there's something there. I actually have uh, Robert Pentagraft and I were there one night, and on the side of mm-hmm. David's house, he's got these stairs, outdoor stairs, and we're standing yeah. there, and we hear somebody coming down the stairs. So we open the door, and we both go out, but nobody there. So Robert goes down the stairs, and I'm standing on the thing, you know, in the middle where I can look up the stairs, and they have the slats between them. They're just cement stairs, you know, with slats. Mm-hmm. And there's leaves yeah. on them. And I'm looking up there, and all of a sudden I hear coming down the stairs, crunch, 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 coming towards me. So I'm just standing there, and I, I just hear walking down the stairs, crunch, 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 and it stops like two stairs above me. And I'm just standing there, and I just looked, oh, wow. and I went, hi. <laughs> you know, but nothing else happened. Yeah. But Robert came up, and he said, yeah, I heard that. So, I mean, it was, that, it was really interesting. It was unmistakable. What you know, It sounded like someone walking down the stairs. So that was interesting. And the Omen House, Robert had a uh, thing there. We were all there one night, and uh, it's actually one of the times the whole group was there, uh, at least the whole mm-hmm. group of, of the members we had at the time. And we were downstairs, and we hear what sounds like somebody walking very loud on the second floor. So Robert's near the spiral staircase. I don't know if you've ever seen it on Ghost Adventures. And uh, yeah. Robert goes up, and he comes back down, and as he gets downstairs, he just at the bottom, it sounds like somebody jumping and stomping on the floor as hard as they can in the hallway above us. I mean, just like boom, boom. And, I mean, if you look on our website, we have things, you know, where it says evidence. If you look at hallway one and hallway two, that's some weirdness that happened in that hallway. But Robert is like mm-hmm. six foot five, six foot six, 300 pounds, and he's not really afraid of very much, right? <laughs> so, you know, after he and I went up, we went through the whole house. There's nothing up there, right? So we come back down, and Robert says, man, he says, I'll tell you what happened to me. And I said, what? He goes, first time I went up there, he says, the, stair, the, the footsteps were walking away from me. He says, so I followed him down to the laundry room. He says, and then while I'm standing there, I heard the footsteps run up from behind me. And I was like, oh, no, yeah. I've never heard anything like that. It was like they lured him into a spot and, you know. David has a very interesting house. Um, one of the most interesting and I would say kind of, weird things that I've had happen to me in the paranormal recently was I was at his house for a party and, and I was with my friend. friend. We were sitting, sitting on the very bottom third, third floor and, and I had, had my ghost radar on. on. I wasn't really investigating. I just, I just had it on, on. you know, I was hanging out, out, out with her. And, and on, on the ghost, ghost radar, radar, which I've, I've never gotten this word before, before, I got the word pig. Yep. Well, that's, that's interesting because I, didn't they write that word in blood? Yeah, yeah, they did. The, the Tate, the Tate murders. Yeah, she yeah. got the name Paul too, and that's what Paul. Sharon was going to name her son. Yeah, I got that on the ghost radar uh, a few years ago, but Pig was definitely um, very unexpected for me um, because I was just sitting there. I had never gotten that word before. I wasn't investigating. I just had it on, just hanging out, and I 
knew that that's what they had written, and I was very surprised to actually have that appear, and it stayed there for a pretty long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that, that, that is a creepy house. Um, when we first went there, the very first time we went, um, myself and Robert and I believe Kane and all of us walked into the house, and uh, as you walk in, you walk past his kitchen, and then you go down in the living room, and off to the side is that room with the aquarium where the little figures fall over. But he says, and then mm-hmm. this way is towards the bathroom. We start walking, and we're about 10 feet from the bathroom, and I stopped, and I said, there's something right here. He goes, what? I said, there's an energy right here, like a portal or something. I don't know, but it's a strong energy right here. And David says, no, no, it's the bathroom. James Von Prague said, it's it's in the bathroom. I said, well, James Von Prague missed by 10 feet. <laughs> it's right here, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, by the way, confidence is, lacking confidence is not one of the things that I have. But anyway, um, <laughs> Robert Robert stands in the living room, and he takes a picture towards the uh, the wall where all the, the aquarium and the figurines are, takes a picture, you know, from the same spot of, you know, the hallway where I said the, the portal was, and then the, he turns around and he takes a picture of the uh, kitchen. Well, we look at the pictures. The one of the figurines in the aquarium, perfect. The one of the kitchen is perfect. The place where the portal is is oranged out. You can't even see anything. Yeah, David um, has a very interesting house. Um, you never know what you're going to get there, and um, it's definitely a very cool place to investigate. Yeah, and personally, I think... Uh, you know, I, I think David is, you know, and he disagrees with me all the time, but I do think that a lot of the stuff that happens there is because, you know, he feels comfortable there with them. You know, so I think it's, you know, yeah. that's, you know, I, I don't say he brings them in, but I think they, yeah, I think they know that he's yeah. not going to throw them out, you know. And I know we're coming towards the end of the show, but are there any websites, upcoming interviews or events that you would like to mention? Well, I think if uh, actually I have an online magazine at hghmag.com, uh, a lot of good interviews, uh, Zach, Aaron Ryder, um, Nick Groff. The next one is interviewing Kane about his, you know, his ghost hunting stuff. You'll see a lot of the things that I've seen in Scotland and, you know, different articles mm-hmm. from different authors, authors. So, and it's free. So if you don't like it, you, you know, you get your money back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you definitely have had some very cool people in the magazine to interview, so everyone definitely make sure to go check it out. Yeah, I mean, it's it, like I said, it's there's some interesting things in there. Um, I would say to look up the Bachelor's Grove one because it's the all-time best. I mean, if you have time, I'll tell you real quick. It's the best all-time prank that anybody's ever done in ghost hunting, and it wasn't planned. Um, mm-hmm. Back, if you know Bachelors Grove, it's a place outside Illinois, outside Chicago, and it's a cemetery with a little pond in it, and you know, it's got this real creepy gravel road about 200 yards that you can drive in or walk in. And back in the day, you were not allowed in there. If the police caught you, you went to jail. So when I was in right. college, we weren't too far from there. Two of my friends, we went out there and, and we're walking around in the graveyard, and we noticed. Three graves in a row right next to each other. They're sunk down about a foot and a half like somebody had taken the, the coffin out. Right? We're standing there mm-hmm. looking at it, and we hear these, this car come racing up the gravel. And we're like, uh-oh, and there's no place to go. You can't get out. There's, there was a fence. You know, there's a bunch of trees. You're not going anywhere. You know, you're like standing out in the open. So I get this great idea. I said, lay down in the graves because I figured a cop would come up and just look, you know, with a flashlight across the thing and leave. So we all lay down in the graves, and the first thing I'm thinking is, you know, some hands are going to grab me and drag me underneath. And, you know, but we're all laying there real quiet, and we hear the car door close, and we hear this girl go, honey, I'm scared. And I went, oh, geez, it's people, <laughs> right? So then I hear the guy goes, I'll protect you, right? And then we hear another door, so there's, a couple, there's two couples. And as they're walking towards us, I just leaned over to my, my roommate, uh, which give you an instance, his nickname was Psycho, and he deserved it. But I just said, Psycho, mm-hmm. tell Scott that on three, when I count to three, sit up, look straight ahead, and then turn and look at the people. So we're sitting there, we hear him coming closer, and I go, <laughs> one, two, three. And we all sat up and just looked straight ahead, and then we all turned and looked at him. And that was like 1975 or 1976. And judging by mm-hmm. the way they ran and screened, they're probably still going. Yeah, for Scott. Yeah. 
and it wasn't planned at all. It just worked out that way. The all-time best prank in the history of paranormal. Wow. Yeah, I had something similar to that on the Queen Mary a while ago. I know we're running out of time, though, but um, thank you so much, Rick, for coming on today. Anytime. Yeah, right. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Rick was a great guest. I want to thank you all for listening today. The show definitely would not be possible without all of you, and I'll talk to you guys again next week. Bye. Hey, this is Zach Bagans from Ghost Adventures, and you are listening to the ghost host, Sophia Temporilli, on LiveParanormal.com.